Hi, I'm Abby, former pharmacist turned health coach, specializing in willpower and motivation. I help women stick to their plan so that they can lose weight, feel amazing, have energy, and really live their lives and show up how they want to without all the battling and fighting and restricting and cravings and white knuckling it. So let's go. Self-compassion is a requirement for long-term weight loss. Period. That's the end. I could be done with the podcast now. <laughs> that is a requirement. So often we see, I see people that I'm working with, my clients, and even in myself, um, weight loss hasn't been my issue, but battling cravings and battling this um, inability to control what I'm eating um, and, you know, do the healthy habits. That is where I can relate. I have a, I have always had felt like I had zero willpower. And so cue the trying to shame myself, battling, restricting, fighting, all of that battling, controlling energy. It's shaming energy is what it is. And it doesn't work. Data shows us that, my experience shows us that, my clients' experiences show us that. That doesn't work, which begs the question, what does work? And the answer to that is self-compassion, okay? It is a requirement for long-term weight loss and behavior change. So <laughs> I, would, I would go as far as to say, if you are trying to lose weight, and you are shaming the shit out of yourself and have zero self-compassion for yourself, just don't worry about the weight loss right now. Focus on drumming up and tapping in to self-compassion for self. Because what you're going through is hard. We live in a system that is telling us to eat junk food and lay on the couch and use our phones all day long. And so as humans, it is hard. And we will experience suffering, right? Um, and so when I say self-compassion, I'm guessing many of you are thinking of what, so Kristen Neff, who's a researcher, a self-compassion researcher, has a website called selfcompassion.org. Check it out. That's where this, some of the topics are coming from. Um, she calls this self-compassion that you're probably imagining tender self-compassion. So I'm paraphrasing here, and this is my own interpretation, but when I think of tender self-compassion, I think of the sense of accepting and loving ourselves for exactly who we are, exactly as we are, um, and that we do not need to earn this acceptance. We don't need to prove our worthiness. We are enough just as we are. And this tender self-compassion is absolutely needed. It's important. Um, if you do not love yourself, it is so hard to take actions for ourselves. If you don't have compassion for yourself, if you don't have compassion for how hard this is, every time you fail, quote unquote, you shame the shit out of yourself. When there's some compassion that this is hard, it's a little bit more you're a little bit more able to let those things go and, and refocus forward. And this, and if we just have tender self-compassion, does your brain, does your brain go where my brain goes? If, cause when I think of this tender love ourselves exactly as we are, no matter our size, no matter our shape, no matter what we're doing, love ourselves. My brain says, yeah, but that I'm just going to end up laying on my couch watching my phone, eating junk food all day long, because that is what I want, right? So, so because of that, and that is like, actually, like you could ultimately self-compassion yourself onto the couch. If we don't balance that tender, loving self-compassion with which, what Kristen Neff calls fierce self-compassion. Fierce self-compassion to me is this energy that motivates us to take action, to draw and keep boundaries in place for ourselves, to help us get motivated to take action to provide for our real needs, <laughs> not my so-called need for cookie dough, 
but my needs for energy and fuel and nutrition and movement and sunlight, right? Those are our real needs. Fierce self-compassion is this energy to, to learn and grow and change as we are led by our desires for what we actually want, right? So this balance of tender plus fierce self-compassion, um, Kristen Neff actually calls it caring force. She's often talking about it uh, in terms of like acting out on injustices or, you know, like social injustices in the world, kind of this uh, mama bear energy where like we are fighting for those we love. I like to think of it like, what if we could harness that fierce self-compassion for ourselves, right? Like I will not eat this entire bag of candy, whatever it is, drink this soda, you know, um, lay on the couch all day. I will not indulge in this because that's not what my body actually needs. It's not what actually is going to help me feel energetic and vibrant. And that's a value to me. I want to feel energetic and vibrant. And I know that if I can really harness the self-compassion and the fierceness and the, I deserve to feel amazing energy, then that's how I can actually make change. Not reminder in comparison to you don't deserve that. You should be punished. You ate sugar yesterday and now you should go run blah, 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 whatever that is like that doesn't work. Um, so I really just invite you to kind of dabble in the self-compassion. What does it feel like if you gen muster up some self-compassion for yourself and for being a human and for like living in the world <laughs> that is hard? Um, I want to share one tip. So in my program, the willpower solution, I help women stick to their own plan, even if they have no willpower so that they can lose weight, feel amazing without having to like restrict and battle and fight with cravings all the time. And so one big pillar of the program is self-compassion because that's what you need in order to get those changes. And so um, one little tidbit that I want to share with you is this idea of you know, if you're having a hard time feeling compassion for yourself, if your thoughts are like, I just have no willpower, I have no self-control, I just need more discipline, I just need to try harder. And if I can't do it from this energy, then I'm just weak and lazy and a bum. If that sounds familiar to you, I invite you to just tr imagine either yourself as a child, or if you have a daughter or a son, um, any child. <laughs> For me, I, I imagine my daughter because she looks just like me when I was little. And so when I look at her, I can really drum up compassion for my own self as a, as a young child. And, um, how would you respond to them if they were to say, come to you and say, you know, I am lazy. I can't stick to this hard thing because I'm lazy. I'm weak. I have no self-control. Um, I should be able to do this. I just need to try. Like, how would you respond to that, right? Like, would you have empathy? Would you uh, feel kindness and compassion for what they're trying to do that it's just a hard thing? <laughs> and maybe they just don't have the skill set at this point, right? So tapping into that like small child and how you would react to a small child can be really useful to tap into what that compassionate energy feels like and then take a take a take a try at turning that back around on you um i like to put my hand on my heart and like send compassion back to me sometimes um especially when i'm like being real shamey at myself still happens but when i notice it i really try to bring the self compassion on board because the shame spiral sends me right back to those habits that I don't want to have. The eating for coping, the zoning out on the phone, the not doing the actions, right? Whereas the self-compassion energy sends me towards getting sunlight in the morning and cold showers <laughs> and eating 
vegetables and protein, right? And getting my electrolytes. So I just invite you to dabble with the self-compassion and see what comes up and see if you're able to approach your, your challenges in a new way. Um, I do want to share one last thing with you. So I have a, I'm really excited because I've opened up some slots um, this week and next for, if you're listening to this in real time, for what I call a willpower assessment. And so if you, if this episode resonates with you, one of the things that we do on the call is we figure out what is the root cause for your lack of willpower, right? So if you have cravings, there's lots of different reasons we can have those. We can have blood sugar, erratic blood sugar. We can have a gut microbiome that is demanding sugary food. We can um, have a, a coping issue where we can't tolerate feeling bored or anxious or, um, you know, upset for, for whatever reason in the world. Um, we can have an, a lack of self-compassion. And that is, the craving is trying to deal with that like shame spiral that is happening because <laughs> that doesn't feel good. And so on the call, we will kind of dig in and figure out what is the reason for your lack of willpower, okay? And this is a service that I offer. It's totally free, takes a little bit less than an hour um, and it's with me. So I would love, love to dig in because if you don't know, what the reason for your lack of willpower is, there is no way to resolve it. And there's no way to build a system that actually doesn't require willpower unless we know why we don't have it. So um, make sure to grab the link in the show notes and um, cannot wait to help you figure out your reason that you don't have willpower. I can relate. <laughs> Talk soon. All right. So if this resonated with you, if you found this useful, if you'd like to dig in a bit more, I want to share with you a free resource that I offer called a willpower assessment call. So this call is for you. If you have out of control cravings, if you're trying to lower those processed carbs or make some changes in your life, if you're trying to lose weight by battling and fighting and resisting and restricting against your body, if you know what to do, but you just can't do it, this call is for you. On the call, we will talk about your specific willpower goal and why you want it, obstacles and challenges that kind of have derailed your success and the self-sabotage that comes along with it. I am so excited to personally, it'll be me, jump on a call and see how we can help you if if at the end of the call, we're a good fit, I'll let you know the other resources that I have available, including my program, The Willpower Solution. But if not, I will send you on your way, point you to some more resources that will be great for you. As always, you can find me in my Facebook group, No Willpower, No Problem, and on Instagram at Abby Lindy. I can't wait to connect.